Hello and welcome to another Talking To episode. I'm your host Teddy and today I'm being joined once again by... Hayden! And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 episodes from the season 1 of the 2003 show and it's been a long time coming. So uh, yeah, would you like to start us off with your number 10 choice? Um, well... Okay, we're starting off with top 10. Alright, sweet. <laughs> um, my top 10 for this series... Um, has got to be episode one. Um, episode one. Okay. Is there a reason why? Um, the reason why for this uh, for this to be my top one, uh, top ten, sorry, was um, because this is the first time I was introduced to this series um, of the teenage the teenage mutant ninja turtle series of two thousand three and. I I just got to give it um, a shout out because it's just a really really nice introductionary episode. It tells you a bit a bit about the world you're entering, and it's it's the first episode. Like it's just where it all began, and that's why I like it, and that's why it's in my top ten. Yeah, I mean the episode didn't. I would not say it's a top ten worthy one for me. I think it's like a more of an honourable mention one for me. But yeah, I do definitely did enjoy that episode, and I think that it did do a lot of good stuff for the series, setting up the tone and stuff like that. I do think there's a lot of good things in there, but I, I don't know. I think because it was so early on with how those episodes were made compared to some of the later ones, I don't think it really hit that top ten mark for me. Uh, for me, it's um, uh, meet Casey Jones and. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I mean, for me, because I'm a big comic book fan, and, and this whole series, and especially some of these episodes, they did take a lot of inspiration from the comics. We're taking like panels from it, and just it looks amazing. Not to mention for Raphael in this version of Turtles, he's my favorite character, so of course I had to give him some more love. But also, it's just this version of Casey, and I don't really know what else to really say. It was a really great story about how Raph was learning how to do with his anger and also sort of become the master and teaching Casey as well. And for the of like there's a lot of really great things in this episode that when you look back on this one you're like, oh that's where that bit came from and this is where like the relationship started with Raph and Casey. I feel so like there's a lot of really great things about this episode. And I won't necessarily say that it's like one of the best episodes from this season or one of the best episodes from this show. But I think that like, there's a lot of really great things in this episode for you to go, yeah, that was a really good one. Hmm, definitely. Um, so yeah, um, what do you have for number nine spot? Well, number nine, um, where is it? I know I have it here somewhere. Number nine, um, uh, episode four, introdu- introducing Casey Jones to the, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, and of course, the um the turtles finding their new layer that's that's my that's my number nine okay so yeah pretty similar i mean for me my one's bit, uh, quite a bit different is episode 12 the unconvincing turtle titan and i love this episode for quite a few reasons and i do think like a part of it is because i do have some childhood memories from this episode which would you know um you can't really explain because they're very personal to people but I do think that this episode does a really good job of do, going, making this show feel more comic booky than than like other comic book shows. And I think that this show or this episode in particular did a really good job for also like doing a lot of world building with only one character, which I think was just so great. I mean, just because I mean, just because like before that we had like a few villains here and there, but there wasn't really anything like too big or spectacular like Silver Century who comes in and opens up the world to superheroes and the more comic booky aspects. And not to mention Turtle Titan is just a great addition to the series. Just Mikey being a superhero, I don't think there's anything else I can really say about it. It just has a lot of really great elements in this episode that I do think that it makes for a really great story. And it's definitely something which I would like them to explore and expand, a lot, uh, expand upon a lot more in future episodes, which shame they didn't really, because again, I feel as though the, like with the creative team behind it being from a comic book background, I feel as though that they could have really explored it and do a really good job. Shame they didn't do that, but I do think that the Uncovered Tell Titan is just such an amazing episode. Um, so what do you have for your number eight spot? Oh, number eight. 
Uh, let's see. Number eight has got to be episode two um, of this series. Um, the reason why it is my number eight is because we get to introduce to April O'Neil, and of course we get introduced to Baxter Stockman. And I've mm. just got to say, this this was a very tough decision for me um, to put it at number eight. It's just because um, I really did want to put this in like my top three episodes, but. I, I couldn't because of all the others that I tried cramming in. <laughs> but yeah, I got to put it as number eight. It's because we get introduced to April O'Neil, of course, and of course, Baxter Stockman himself. And Baxter Stockman is, in my opinion, this this version of Baxter Stockman is really, really impressive. And I really do enjoy this whole character, his whole confidence, his whole villainous flair to him. It, it just makes it so much better. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, hearing like what we have to say about Baxter Stockman, I re- I'm really ashamed that I didn't put an episode on, on my top 10 list. I mean, Baxter Stockman is just an amazing villain, hands down. I think maybe even one of the best from Turtles, and specifically this version of Baxter. Oh, I, I'm I'm really disappointed if I didn't put that one on my list. But for my I number eight... you put that down. No, I, I, I mean, it's a good episode. It's just... I, I don't know, I think it's one, like, because it's, like, so early on compared to, like, the other episodes later on in the season where they do have a different kind of feel to them. I, I don't know, I, I do enjoy episode two, but I, I wouldn't really necessarily say it's a top ten worthy episode for me. But for my number eight one, it's episode 16, The King. And I feel as though that the only thing I've really got to say about it to really emphasise my point is Life at Best is Bear Sweet, and... I don't really know what else to really say about this episode. This episode is just so great, so emotional, so fun, adventurous, and stuff like that. I don't think there's anything really negative I can really say about it. I think the only sort of negative thing I can say about it is the fact that it's actually a short episode, and it feels though that this like story which they are choosing to go down for this episode would have probably been better to have expanded it into like a two or three parter where it could have properly expand upon the like the universe that Kirby has created. I feel so like there was so much fun stuff they could have done, but it's a shame I didn't do it. But with what we did get it was just so amazing, so creative, so fun. Not to mention it's a tribute to Jack Kirby. I don't know what else to really say other than just love at best is bare sweet. <laughs> um so yeah, um what's your number seven spot? Number seven, um, I have got to say, number seven has got to be, oh, number seven, number seven, it has got to be the, um, the episode seven, um, let's see, I forgot the name of it, what is it called, I'm so sorry, um, the, the way of invisibility. Oh, that one, okay. The Way of Invisibility, there it is, remembered <laughs> it. Um, basically, we get introduced to the Invisible Ninjas, and Ralph gets captured by Han, and this is like the start of Baxter Stockman's demise, and we get to see him slowly becoming less human as Mas- as Shredder takes away his like um, body parts, and that's just a really prominent episode for me because I really did enjoy how they managed to get the fight scenes in in this episode um, with the whole how they got the rain to um, I, I, just, I can't describe it to ah sorry to mimic um, how the rain mimics like the invisibility of the foot ninjas and how the rain is just making the environment so much better and of course how the rain helps the ninja turtles figure out and fight against the invisible ninjas and that's just what really takes the cake in this episode for me and that's why i had to put it in my top 10. i mean again unfortunately that's another one that's not on my list but uh i really should have put that one on my list that was actually a really good episode i did really enjoy that one i think like there's a lot of really great things in that one i mean the yo mama thing is always going to be a constant thing that people always remember for this episode I do like the foot soldiers in this episode as well, the foot techniques, I feel like they, like they were a great addition to this episode and the series, and I do feel so that the elements of Tells fighting the Invisible Ninjas were just so much fun, but I do think that this was one of the episodes that I did definitely notice 
a big change in terms of like the story, in terms of the pacing of how this episode and story was a really good one. It's just that maybe with the like 2000ness of it, um, with the pacing, it just feels very slow and it could have been better, I feel so, but it was still an amazing episode. For my number seven, it has to be Monster Hunter. And this episode is a really interesting one. So I like the fact that it's split into two parts for this uh, for the story. And for the story, we, we have one part where I do get to see Leo and Raph building Leo up to become his normal, normal self. And I do think that's a really great story for that thing. And it was just amazing. I do love that bit about it. But I feel so that bit could have been improved and maybe have that little story been seen over a few episodes just so that, it's, so that it didn't really feel as rushed as it did. But we're saying that, we do have Mikey and Donnie's part of the episode where they're fighting Abigail Finn and trying to stop her from getting the monster of some degree monster. And there's like a lot of really great things about this episode. It's just like, you know, it's one of those fun tour episodes that you can just sit down, relax and watch and don't really think too much of it. I mean, there's so many great things in this one. We've got to see Casey being caged up and pretending to be the green monster. Abigail Finn's uh, catchphrase uh, saying Parker. Uh, Mikey fighting Abigail Finn in the woods. Like, there's so many great things in this episode, but I feel so that it's somewhat underrated, but at the same time, I don't know what else to say about it because I feel so like, there was, like this episode is really good, but the parts which I do have problems with are sort of like the ones which really just knock this episode down from being like one of the best episodes from the season. Um, so what's your number six spot? Hmm. Number six. This is this is where it gets very, very difficult for me, and this is where I start to question whether I did good with the top ten or not. Um for the top ten, I have got to uh, sorry. Um God my mind just went blank there, sorry. <laughs> um Number six. This number six, thank you. Um, number six has got to be the um, Lone Wrath and Cub episode. Ooh, okay. And it was it was really difficult because I did have something else that was going to be as my number six, but I had to choose this one because it was um, I just found it really interesting because we were experimenting with the. Um, with new characters and seeing the world from a kid's perspective and of course Raph being this sort of not a fatherly figure but like a brother sort of like a brotherly figure to this to this young man this young boy and uh, I just really loved how um, the kid and Raph became a great great uh, great bond and like they forged a brotherhood as the kid was giving him instructions when um, Raph was battling blind against the uh, mob boss. I, I can't remember his name, sadly, but when he was fighting the mob boss, and I just really loved how they just forged that strong bond. And, of course, it was just cool to see how they're entering the new characters and how they've developed this kid into, like, the world that it is. And, of course, it shows the hardships that face everyone in new york city as there's crime there's mob bosses there's always the fear of losing everything and i feel like this episode really portrays it um really really well yeah i mean i do really enjoy this episode i don't want to talk about it just yet because it is on my list somewhere so good choice <laughs> uh, for my number six spot it has to be fallen angel and there is just so much good stuff in this episode one angel, two Casey, and three Hun. I, I don't really know what else to really say. This episode is just so great for really developing these characters, introducing us to more of the underworld stuff, which was just great. Angel is amazing. Casey, oh my god, there's so much good stuff to really talk about in this episode. And how they're really developing Casey as more of a, I want to say, again, like brotherly type character, but also. Like character who's like he's always there when you need him and always do it will always go above and beyond to go out and help someone even if it will go and kill him and i do think that's like that's a really good thing for casey and there's so many great things about it and when when he goes in and fights han you can definitely tell that like there's a lot of emotional stuff behind it all with how han killed casey's father and stuff like that there's so much great things about it and angel meeting the turtles 
I, I feel so if I just keep repeating the same stuff and over and over again. And yeah. <laughs> I feel so if like one, like this episode, because it was so early on, just like with some of the other episodes which I've talked about uh, briefly on this episode, with uh, like this episode being like a early episode, I feel so if this episode would have been uh, possibly top three episode if this episode wasn't so 2000s just because it, the pacing for it just feels a little bit off and when the trolls are fighting some deep old dragons uh, near the end of the episode even though it's a really great scene that I mean, do get to see them fight and all that and it's amazing it feels so like the pacing for it is just a little bit off where basically the trolls will jump up and then they'll do like and then do like, like spin the weapon and then then a few frames like can or, like, or a few seconds later uh, they'll then jump down and then hit, hit the person and this feels, I don't want to say unrealistic, but it just feels through that the pacing is really off. And I think that's the main problem which I do have for some of the early episodes, but the story alone for this one is just amazing. And I feel also that the, even at the end where we do get to see like, Casey nearly about to kill Han, and Angel uh, basically helps him like how Casey helped her at the beginning of the episode, about, uh, uh, was it, uh, was, the message, uh, was the line saying that basically stopping, uh, stopping Casey from making the biggest, um, biggest mistake of his life. I, I don't know what else to really say, I just keep repeating myself. Um, so what's your number five spot? Uh, before we go into the, um, the number five spot of our top ten, Teddy, um, I gotta say, I'm so glad that you brought that episode up, because that was going to be my number six, Ooh. and it was really close for me to put that as my number six but i'm so glad you brought it up because i agree with you i really did enjoy that episode um the most prominent part that i really do enjoy about that episode is when the ninja turtles dress up in human clothing like for the first <laughs> time and they walk among the human they walk among the people and the humans and they try and act cool and I don't know why, something about that one particular scene just got to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, why does this look like <laughs> they're in like a gang or a mob and it, 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 I don't I don't understand how to describe it, but it was just so it was so unique to that episode and it was just so funny to see them in human clothing and trying to act and blend in. It, it just really made me laugh and I just... Oh, and I do have one quick question before we do go into number five uh, section. And um, what's the reason why uh, Lone Ruffin Cub was better than uh, Fallen Angel? Because I'm quite curious about that. Um, it was a very tough decision, and to be honest, I I really wish I could have like put the two together and talked about them a lot more. But because I have all the other episodes, it wasn't going to make any sense to have like 11 out of my top 10 you know <laughs> i couldn't have i couldn't have both episodes in so i had to make the hard decision to see which one i enjoyed the most and it was really really tough and that's that that i came to a compromise and said lone raf and cubs so yeah it was it was a it was a hard decision because i didn't want to i i wanted to put it in but i didn't have room because otherwise we would have had 10 like top 13 <laughs> it would have been that and it would have been a long long list and so i had to compromise okay um okay so and what do you have for your number five spot number five i would have to say for my number five it would have to be duh, 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 uh episode nine garbage man Ooh, that's an interesting one did not expect to hear that one on the list oh really yeah, I'm quite curious. I'm, I'm very curious to hear why you had that one on your list now. Um, the reason why it's my number five, it's because we get introduced to Garbage Man, and Garbage Man is. I know he was only in the one episode, and I'm not too sure if we get to see him again within the series. I hope we do, but he was just a, such a unique character. His whole whole idea of making his empire through garbage and of course his delusion of like using humans like as like slaves on his island and of course i gotta say as well his island was a cool and unique like proper evil hive it's like a traditional and villainous hideout like he's got his own private island he's got his own men he's got his own 
facility where he's creating a huge empire to rule. And it was just really, really good. And of course, I've got to say as well, the, the first couple of moments within the episode was the utmost destruction that the um of the uh, homeless settlement and i it was it was just crazy and that's the one thing that took uh, me by surprise just the amount of destruction you hear the screaming you hear the terrified people and they're running for their lives and they can't get away and then of course the one the one bit about that scene was when the professor decided to like uh, rant on about how he's like, you would never take me, you will never take my freedom. And then, of course, he gets taken away, gets wrapped up in the metal fence and he gets chucked in the back of the van. And that was just the one thing that I really did enjoy about it. It was just like it was different. It was it was just it had its own unique, unique factor to this episode. And that's why it's my top five. OK, that's. Very interesting. I mean, I enjoyed the episode. I think a lot of there's a lot of really great elements in there, a lot of horror elements and stuff like that. But the one thing that like sort of like never really put me on board for this episode being like the best one. I mean, I think that the message which I was trying to push in this episode was a great one, bas- uh, and and basically in the treat homeless people and he give them more respect and more nourishment stuff like that. I think that message is great, but I think the one thing that's always always like put me off, uh, put me off this episode. Was the way that they went around it with the garbage man? It felt so like it was such like made such a joke, and I, I don't know. I feel so like, sort of made fun of it in a way, but oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know necessarily made fun of it, but like with the whole garbage man thing and garbage island, it just sounds so jokey that it. I, I don't know. I, I think that makes sense, but I do. But I do find it really interesting. But you had the episode on your list. Um, for my number five one, it is Lone Ruff and Cub. And oh boy, yeah, this episode is just amazing. With Raph definitely taking on a more authority figure, and it's just amazing. And do you think that because Raphael is, is one of my favorite uh, characters in this in the show, it works so well? Just was like, like I would definitely say developing his character on more of a better personal note, and so I would see that he's more than just the angry, hot-headed character, and is able to really care for others, he's able to show a more compassionate side, uh, side for others, and is able to do some amazing fights in this episode. I do think some of the best ones was him finding the mob boss, fighting some of the, uh, some, some of the mobs in, this, in the alleyway, slamming the door in the face, uh, getting one of the signs down. I feel so this episode did a lot of stuff for Raphael, and it definitely just goes through in later episodes, but he definitely is a really good, great character, really developed one in certain episodes. And this one here is showing his more unique side with him, like, really caring about others, which is so great. And it's definitely something which I would like to see in a lot more. Tyler was an interesting character to include in this episode. Shame they don't really ever use him again. And it feels through that the connection and bond between the two was really interesting, seeing Almost like a younger version of Casey with Raph was just, it's so interesting. I feel so like there's so many great elements in this episode that we do definitely explore and develop later. And just stuff which I would like to see a lot more of. But with this episode being the first one of its kind, it was just so amazing. Um, So what if we number four spot? My number four spot for this episode, I mean, for this, for this series, I mean... Um, has got to be. Uh, this is really difficult as well. Um, it has to be. God, I can't. Rem- God, my mind's just gone blank. Sorry, it's just just trying <laughs> to remember all the episodes and trying to figure out which one is best. And of course, it was a real struggle trying to cram all these episodes into like the top ten because I, I've just got to say this overall. With this series, I have thoroughly enjoyed every episode. And I don't think... Sure, there is some episodes that I prefer more than the others, but all of them are good. And it's just a really nice story in all of them. And some may be a bit out of it, like the um, the Monster Hunter thing, and maybe the, uh, the Turtle Titan, as you say. Like, it was a proper out-there episode and wasn't... Comp- wasn't a part of like the major story but overall i've enjoyed all the episodes in this series but enough about that because top four right (laughs) my top four has got to be 
the Shredder Strikes Back Part One, Episode Seventeen. Ooh, okay. The He's reason. In... Oh, I was about to say something. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say my reasoning for this is because of the non-stop action and the fight scenes with Leo and the Foot, and of course, Leo is running for his life throughout New York City, trying to avoid the foot and avoid death itself and it's just a really powerful episode in which like he's battling for his sheer life and he's battling against all odds by himself without his brothers and he is outnumbered and in every stance and he's just hanging on for dear life and it's just a really powerful episode for me as well and including the fact that at the end of this episode of Shredder Strikes Back, he is thrown through the window of April's apartment. And for that, that really just sent shockwaves through me. Like, he got thrown through the window. He's battered. He's bruised. He's on the verge of, like, death itself. And that was just really cold. Like, Shredder's back, and he's back to stay. That was just a really powerful message to the audience to say, look, Shredder is not messing around this time. He will kill. He will hurt you. He will hurt you and your loved ones and your family, and he will have no remorse. And that was just a really cool episode and a really cool message to portray the audience to us that this is going to get real wild real quick. Okay, so with that, I don't want to say anything about the episode. I do agree with your list. It's just that I do have that episode much higher up on my list, so I'm not going to say anything about it. But I do want to go back to your point, uh, just before you, you went on to explain your number four bit, about saying how all the episodes are really good. And yeah, I must admit, this season has really great episodes. And I do think like there are definitely better episodes than others, but I do think that all of them overall are really good and enjoyable ones that I would definitely sit down and rewatch. I think it's only like two in here that I probably wouldn't watch it over and over again. But like compared to tw uh, 2012, which did definitely had some really good and standout episodes, but there's a lot of episodes in there that you could more or less skip really and you wouldn't really care too much, either for that like, story or just for like the filler episodes. But with this se uh, uh, season, I have to say that even the filler episodes are just so great and yeah. So for my number four spot, it has to be episode 10 and 11, Shredder Strikes. Now, with this one, I'm, I'm including like, the parts as just one, just because I will see them as just one big episode and so just individual ones. I, I think that's always how I've always seen them, just because I think if you sort of rank it by the parts, I mean, I think it, it's a little bit biased just because, like, cause, I mean, just because like, some parts are better than others because of what they do in certain parts. But with the Shredder Strike story, it was a really interesting one, as this one was the one where we do get to see the Shredder and the Turtles finally come in contact for the first time. And with this, we do get to see um, Shredder trying to persuade Leonardo to come over to the dark side. And then we do get to see Splinter's origin story about how his master died. And then we got to see the Shredder come in, beat up the Turtles, the Turtles run away, and then they come back and they're an amazing battle with Shredder fighting my Splinter. And there was, I think the main thing for this episode really, or uh, I'd say like two things for this episode. One, the action, I don't think anyone can disagree with me on this. But the action in the episode was really good, and there's so many great fun fight scenes um, in this episode. You get to see the turtles uh, fight Shredder twice. I don't know what else to really say about that. Also, like unique situations, uh, like a burning building, rain, stuff we haven't really seen too much before this part in the season. And there were so many great things in this episode as well. Like, and also, Splinter vs. Shredder fight, that was also amazing. Also, uh, the other thing which I do think that really makes this episode a lot higher on my list compared to maybe some of the uh, others one is the story for this episode. Now, even though this one doesn't, you know, it's like a very self-contained one in a way, it definitely does set up the long string of episodes to come with the return, uh, with the return to New York, Strike Strikes Back, uh, a sort of notes on the underground parts. Uh, so, I feel so like from like this sort of being like the beginning part of that long list of episodes it like did a really good job and just send shred up to be an amazing villain just being one of those characters for like like yeah oh shit he's a real villain <laughs> and yeah okay so we're in the top three now 
I'm really interested to hear where number three, uh, um, where number three is. This this was. I know I said it was difficult for the others, but this was really down to the wire. This was. Um, I've got to say, for my top three, has got to be episode fifteen, notes from the underground, part three. <gasps> Same seas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I had to include it because I absolutely love this. Um, just with the new characters that are involved and the overall environment was incredible. Like the producers, the animators, the, the voice actors, they really made the world feel alive. And of course, I really did enjoy it. And it was just this mythical, this ancient um, metropolis of this this dead ancient civilization that's living under New York and of course that episode was a bit of a like hold on a minute how is this possible how does no one's found this before how has New York not collapsed upon itself and that episode was a proper real picky episode but I've just got to say that this was really really good and I just loved how the turtles and of course the of course the monsters like um skull crusher and quarry were in there and they were exploring the city and it really did remind me of assassin's creed and that's why it just that's why it just held a special part for me so that's why it's my top three in this in this series i mean for me there's uh, quite a few reasons why this episode is so hard on my list uh, the like one the main reason which i wouldn't necessarily say is the main reason why this episode is so hard on my list but I do have uh, a lot of fun childhood memories from this one that I can't really argue against them. But even even without that, I do think this episode is so great. The, uh, the animation is really great here. The story, um, the, I think like the, everything they do in this episode is just so amazing. The horror vibes for this one is amazing. And then also the exploration in this episode is something which I would love to see a lot more in Turtles. And it's definitely like, I mean, I don't know what else to really say. It's just world building, like, like, and you know, exploring this universe, the history behind it, and exploring everything. And also a great look for the turtles with the rucksacks. That is amazing. And then even some amazing lines in this episode. I think one, uh, like a main one which I had for Raphael was, uh, it was when he was about to go on guard duty and goes, you know me, I love that bit. And then I love, uh, the, the, possibly the most iconic one from this episode is there's uh, some things man was never meant to temper with. So amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh, then also the tools running from the boulder. Oh my God, that was amazing. There Indiana was, Jones. Yeah. So many great things in this episode. Um, hey, would it be okay if we disagree that this is the perfect episode? I I must say that yes, this is one of the perfect episodes. Um, but I I'm not too sure. I'm a bit conflicted when you say that though, because this episode is definitely like I uh, absolutely love this episode, and I believe it's perfect as well. But I believe there's another contender for this as well. This title. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I mean, you must admit, like, there are other episodes where I would definitely say but also like really good. But in terms of like when you look at this episode and you expl- and when you're just watching it and you're breaking it down, I just don't think there's like anything wrong you could really say about it. Like even when you like look into like logic behind all of it, there's also nothing wrong there compared to like some other episodes on this list where and um, we do look into them and like, oh, that bit's a bit unrealistic. I just don't think there's anything wrong with this episode. I, I don't want to be biased, but I think it might be the perfect episode ever. <laughs> mm. It is a really good episode, and I thoroughly enjoyed it because the adventure, because this whole new world that they're exploring underneath the turtles' feet and, of course, underneath New York, it's just the adventure and the action perspective that we get and as as the audience and i just i just really enjoyed it and i've got to agree with you it is one of the perfect episodes but there's another episode that i think you may may or may not agree with me that is the perfect episode but we'll we'll get to that okay um well what's your number two spot then my number two spot my number two has got to be my number two has got to be Oh, it, 
uh, has got to be. Duh, 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 duh. Sorry, it's um, <laughs> has got to be. Ah, here it is. Return to New York, part two. And do you know why it is in my top two? Let me guess. Back to Stockman. Yes, back to Stockman. And of course, it is episode two as well. Um, the reason why is because of the mystics. Those little gnome type creatures that battled against the uh, turtles. Okay. For some reason, I know it sounds a bit weird, but those little creatures were so interesting to me. Like thinking these are creatures from another dimension, another world. And of course, this is like the first time we were getting to see like something alien, something unreal. And it was just really, really weird just to um, just to see that as uh, through here. And of course, as you said before, Baxter Stockman as well. Like we get to see him and he's becoming more confident. He's challenging the Shredder. He is a more powerful character and could be a real threat to the series and the Turtles and the Shredder and everyone else potentially. <laughs> I mean, for my number two spot, I just grouped them all together because I love the Return to New York story arc. I think it's a really great one. And do you think that when you put all the episodes together to put them as one long big episode, I just think it's a really great story to see the Turtles come back and just doing a lot of action, going from floor to floor, fighting the uh, mutant Shredders, the Foot Mystics, ba uh, Baxter and Shredder. The action was just there and I think like, there's an already great and fun elements in this episode. But I do, but I definitely have to say that it's like top two worthy just because of the action. It's just so much fun. But I can't put it at number one just because of the reasons why number one made this episode so good and stuff like that. I think like there's a lot. Of, I think because this episode was so um, like late in the season, it was able to have a lot of development with these characters. It was able to develop a lot of connection with these characters. So when we got to this point in the show and to this point in the series, um. It had all the f reasons why to love it, and all the reasons to make it so great and perfect and stuff like that. It just everything was there to make this amazing. Everything even seemed like Leo come up and starts to shred his head. I just think like there's so many great things in these episodes that put up as like, like definitely like a top ten worthy episode from like the series overall. And there's so many great things about these episodes that I really wish I could have talked about a lot more. In the like, in the episode reviews, but I feel so over like I just would have been going like far too into it, and we definitely wouldn't have not had enough time. But those episodes were just really great, like as a whole. I do think that if I was look at them individually, I think that, like only episode or part three would be a top ten one just because of the action. Like the part two and part one were okay, but they're nothing compared to part three. Um, so what is your number one spot? Ah, oh, number one. This was this was always going to be the case for me. Um, I've got to say, um, episode twenty-three, Return to New York, part three, and I say this um, because I, it's towards the end that really got me the most, and it was just so shocking that they would add this in a well, te basically a a children's program, and of course. We, we we learn through watching these episodes that this is far more than just any children's program. And of course, it was when um, the fight with Baxter Stockman as well, that was really my most enjoyable thing about this. Like, he kept coming back for more. Like, you think, okay, the Turtles have finally got him, let's get to the fight with Shredder. No, he comes back a second time, and then a third time, <laughs> and then he doesn't. And then finally, he gets slayed, and that's it. We've Back to supplements out for the count, but it was just how how it was so um, timed together to see like oh we've killed him let's get back to the fight shredder and now like oh no back to Stockman has got a jetpack now and now we got to cancel the power supply and it was just really funny how they've just added that like oh my gosh he's just don't die <laughs> yeah. and. Uh, the last bit, sorry, I just want to add in this last bit. Um, the decapitation of Shredder's head. 
that was just the one thing that got me the most like oh my gosh the turtles have finally killed the shredder like they just sliced his head off and it's rolling around in the fire and i i that's why i was so shocked about this 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 episode like oh my gosh they actually put that in the series like to be honest at first i was thinking oh my gosh his head's been cut off and of course i was expecting the blood and the gore uh, however it's a children's program it has to be pg um <laughs> but i was just thinking oh my gosh they actually did that like leo actually killed the shredder and that's just what was the most um striking part about that episode and I just got to say a quick disclaimer. I really think that this was the last episode of this series because it was just so good. Like the amount of time and effort and the like the huge build up, like you had two separate parts to this episode for this massive build up for this massive fight scene and then it's not even the last episode. I I was a bit disappointed when I heard it like this should have been the last episode for this series because it was just so good and how it was played out like we had this huge build up and then we got another episode that was like uh and that, like <laughs> it lost all its excitement its enthusiasm its build up and then of course yeah that's the only picky thing that I've got from that episode but overall this episode was my top one and it was perfect because of the action um the the, the betrayal and the whole destruction of the foot and the shredded well I say the death of Shredder, um, but as we all know, um, for those who have been long-time fans of the show, um, we see Shredder, he, he rises basically back from the dead. Um, I don't know how, and I still don't know how he's still alive, but he, he comes up, his like, body reanimates, he walks over in the, to his helmet, picks it up, looks at it, and then walks into the fire with it, unharmed, unfazed, and that was just really really good and that was just the most perfect scene that i could ever imagine like it was so cold it was so bold and we and for for myself i still have no idea what the shredder is going to do or when he's going to come back and there's so many things about the episode that left me so baffled and confused that's just what made it the episode what it was and that's why it's got to be as my top one top number one sorry for this series and the top 10 yeah, I mean, I do think that Return to New York Part 3 is a really great episode. And I do think that everything that's led up to this point in the series was so, was so great. And everything that happened in the episode was so great. But my number one is possibly the reason why Return to New York Part 3 works so well. And that is the Shredder Strikes Back uh, Part 1 and Part 2. I don't really know what to really say. I think that this might be one of the best stories ever told. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about like in, like tell stories. I'm talking about like stories from like Marvel, DC movies, TV shows, comics, or even just books in general. I think that this might be one of the best stories they've ever made and come up with. Like I begin with the part one where you get to see the like Shredder uh, track, uh, tracking down Leo and wearing him down with all the foot soldiers. The uh, best part with the foot lead their entrance. Do I need to say anything else about that bit? And the, I want to say, like, irony between, like, and the, uh, the irony of like, us knowing uh, well, what's happening with the turtles at home and they're being happy, fine. And when, like, got Leo, who's been traced down across the city and uh, nearly dying, and then all come together. And that's when you know, like, and then that's like the part where you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen next? And then you go into the like, next bit and, like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening, and you get to see so many great and amazing fights, we're told to fighting the foot in April's apartment, going down into the shop, fighting the foot elite with the nice hats bit, Shredder fighting uh, Splinter, Casey's amazing entrance, oh my god, do I really need to say anything else, it is just so amazing, and I think that the whole story itself is just so perfectly crafted, the voice acting was in it was amazing, the action alone is possibly the only reason why this episode is on the list. And I do think that if this episode wasn't really here, then I do think that Return to New York Part 3 wouldn't be as good. So that's the reason why I do think that it is better than Return to New York, just because without this episode, it would not have been as impactful or anything like that. And, oh god, I love this episode so much. Um, so uh, yeah, do you have anything else to say about like, top 10 episodes or... Anything like that? Oh, 
To be honest, I um, I'm not too sure. Like I've said everything that I've needed to say about these episodes, and of course, I wish I could have included more, but. It wouldn't be a top 10 now, would it, if I had at least like 15 episodes to go through. <laughs> so it was a really tough decision. And of course, I had to compromise in some. But those episodes, those are the ones that stood out for me the most. And that's what I most remember about those episodes. And that's what just what made it so. And those episodes just made a strong impact on me. And those are the ones I remember the most and they leave like a such a cool story and those are the main episodes that just have the huge impact on the series in general and that's what i really do enjoy yeah i do think that this whole episode overall i do think they're all really good and amazing for different reasons and i think for like the i want to say the top i want to say like my top four are definite ones which will all stay in places like do number four bits but i think like from number 10 to number five I do feel still that like they could like change, like play or change around, like within that list. But I do think those episodes are really good, and I think the whole like show, uh, especially and, like, and specifically the season was just really great and amazing. Um, but like going off that, what do you think about this season overall? And maybe like adjacent to that, what do you think about the show now that you've seen quite a bit of it? Um. Well. Teddy, I just got to say, this series has got to be by far the um, the coolest series that I've that I've watched uh, thus far. I've I know I've only seen the um, the 2012 series and this series, but I got to say, if I had to compare the two, I got to say the 2003 takes the cake by storm. Like this is one of the this is my favorite out of the two that I've watched because it is just so in-depth, there's so much character, there's so much time and effort that's been put into all these different characters and the whole world in general of this series of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It is just so much more depth to it and it feels more alive. Unlike the um, 2012 version, which is like 3D and it just doesn't have the same effect if you understand where I'm coming from. Like, this is more aligned to the comics, and this is more aligned to the whole world, and it's much more dark. Like, that's what makes it so. This is what makes it unique, and that's what I love about this series in general and this and this version of the Turtles, because it's so much more creative in how they've portrayed it in a dark and unpredictable world. Yeah, I've... I feel so I'm a bit more biased towards 2003 just because I grew up on this show and I love this show and I've seen this, this like this season so many times and I do think there's a lot of really good things about 2012 but I think when looking at this one it's sort of really hard to compare the two but with that being said um for next week's episode uh, guys uh, we're going to be doing a somewhat interesting episode uh, for this, um, um, oh, um, and we're doing an interesting episode for the podcast. And now that we've seen both episodes, um, or uh, and seen both uh, like seasons uh, for both shows, uh, we, and we're all thinking about doing a comparison one between 2012 and 2003, comparing different bits. And so I think that was that was going to be really interesting for next week's episode, and seeing like, like what bits had different part, or I mean like. I mean, like, if you compare, like, the two in, in terms of, like, specific parts, in terms of, like, characters, story, I do think it's going to be really interesting now that you have a more of an understanding with Turtles and the universes and how different they are. So, I do think it's going to be a really interesting one for, for next week. And I've got a feeling that now that you've seen the show, it's going to be really interesting. And going off by your excitement for how you were talking about the episodes today, I've got a feeling that you're definitely going to be more biased maybe towards one than the other but uh yeah do you think else say about this episode or like or about this thing or oh, it's all done with this one i'm to be honest i've said that i've said all that i've had to oh uh, excuse me i've said that i've all i've said uh, so sorry i've said everything that i've needed to say i i've got most of it out and yeah i i, can't, I don't know what to say otherwise i'm gonna be going around in circles all night <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm more or less in the same sort of boat as you. I said all I wanted to say, but I want to say more, but I can't. So, um, yeah, so if you do want to get onto the podcast, you can leave a comment 
on YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, and stuff like that. Um, you can also leave one on Anchor, either as a voice message or a text message, and we'll read it or listen to it. And uh, yeah, so I've been Teddy. And I've been Hayden. And we'll see you soon. Goodbye, yo. Bye. Bye.